Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, let's stand up and worship together. Let's sing victory in Jesus this morning. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming love. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing. Let's sing that all again. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. He plunged me, he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Are we good now? Hey, look at that. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Christ Church. I am thrilled that you're here to worship with us. We are so excited. Happy, happy, happy Mother's Day to all of us who have mothers. How many of us have mothers? Well, then we have something to celebrate today. We have something to celebrate. And so let us go to the Lord and remember that we we fight from victory, not for victory. The victory is in Jesus Christ, and we get to be here celebrating his grace, his love, and all of his gifts. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer. God of all creation, we thank you for your grace and your love and the way you move in our lives. We are so excited for what you have done and how you have moved. And Lord, we are here this morning eager to praise your name, eager to give glory to your son, eager to be filled with your and so heavenly father as you have blessed us may we be a blessing to you this morning and as we bless you may we become better blessings to the world thank you for your son jesus who gives us the victory and it's in his name we pray amen as we continue singing i want to remind you and invite you Thank you for your support of this church. Thank you for coming and being back with us this day. If you would like to be a part of the ministry, we do invite you to give. Instead of passing the plates, we will have two baskets outside. I invite you to, to share and to give that way, uh, or you can mail in or go online. We've got some great things happening today. Let's continue to worship Jesus and learn more about it as we go. Sing, who am I? Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Sing, who the sun sets free. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, he has ransomed me. Oh, his grace runs he. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child. Yes, I am. 
In my Father's house There's a place for me I'm a child of God Yes, I am Come on, let's sing this out I am chosen, not forsaken Amen I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me I am who you say I am I am chosen, I am chosen, not forsaken I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me I am who you say I am I am, I am who you say at his voice trembles at his voice come on let's sing this out how great to age and age to age he said time is in his hands beginning and the end beginning and the end the god had three in one father spirit son Lion and the lamb, the lion and the lamb, how great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, see how great, how great.
seated. Chicken? Soup. Soup? <laughs> yeah. Apple. Apples? I know. Eggs. Eggs? What's your mommy's favorite thing to cook? Do you know? Oh, okay. Um, this me, this me. She's 10? Mm -hmm. Cool. One? One hundred. I think she's ten. Um, I don't know. She likes to um, clean up and stuff. She just likes to play with my camper with me. Play in your camper with you? Cool. I'll play Donkey Kong Jr. Donkey Kong Country? No, Donkey Kong Jr. Oh, Donkey Kong Jr. Hug me. I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Read. Read? Cool. Elijah. Can you say, hey, Mommy? Thank you, Mom, for loving me and taking care of me. Thank you, Mom and Matt, for being there when no one else was. I appreciate you. Thank you for always being there for me. I love you, Mom. I love you because you always do good things for me. Bye. Thank you, Mom, for always supporting me with dance. Thank you, Mom, for taking care of me. I love you. Thank you, Mom. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day! Hey, uh, happy Mother's Day again. I, I love our kids. They say, they say the darndest thing, or somebody wrote that or said that or made a TV show based on that one time. Uh, it is Mother's Day, and I want you to think for just a moment. When we celebrate Mother's Day, you know, everybody can get into that because we all have a mama. And I pray and I hope that your mama, uh, whether she's still with you or, or she is now in the arms of our maker, I pray that uh, you had a fantastic experience with her. I know that's not always the case for everybody. So as we celebrate this day, I want, I want us to turn our eyes to some of the things that make mothers great for just a minute. I was thinking about that. I want you to think for just a second about some of your great memories with your mom. You know, I think of my mom uh, dressing up to take us out to the bus stop every morning. And, and up north in Pittsburgh, it gets awful cold. We would have six, eight inches of snow and we'd still have to go to school. And so my mom you know, God bless her. She always had one of those big, long flannel nightgowns. You know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to create an image for you here. And what my mom would do is she wouldn't change. She'd just take sweatpants and pull them up over top of her nightgown. Big old moon boots, a big old tassel cap, or you guys call it a, a, a toboggan down here, I think and a big old winter jacket, and I can still picture my mom trying to get us out to the bus stop. And, and so many of our memories are these funny memories that we, re, that we laugh at, the stories we tell about what mama would do. You know, my mom would chase me around the house with a wooden spoon, not necessarily eager to catch me, but just to keep me running. That was the way to get the energy out of it. I, now that I have a son, I totally understand that. It makes sense. I, I just want to get him a treadmill. Uh, the things that make your mama proud. You know, the things that would put a smile on my mother's face. Yeah, it, it was my creativity. It doesn't matter what kind of artwork you bring home. Mama is thrilled about your artwork, and it goes on the refrigerator. It, Mama wants you to do your best. And I, I shouldn't be surprised by this, but I'm thrilled about it today. What I've learned in the South 
up north, the biggest attended church services are Christmas and Easter. You know what I've learned that it is down in the south? Mother's Day. Mother's Day is the day where the churches are most packed because we want to make Mama proud, right? We know that's where Mama wants us to be. And as we continue this message series, Good Lord, as we think about some of the things maybe the church needs to refocus itself on, some of the things the church needs to stop doing in order to be more faithful to follow Christ, I want to say is stop doing in order to make Mama more proud of us. And as we get ready to roll today, I want us to think about the way we point fingers at each other. Because my mom was an amazing woman, but she was a great, great judge of character, especially when it came between me and my siblings, and who was the one that was the guilty party. And so often in our family, I don't know if it was this way in yours, we were so quick to point fingers. Oh, she did this. Oh, he did this. Oh, it's her. He's touching me. He's touching me. He's touching me. He's touching me. And, and, you know, dad's arm would fling back in the car and start swinging around. But mama knew what was really going on. Mama always knew what was really going on. Who was the real guilty party in all of that. And so often we still play that game as a church family. And we play that game with one another or we play that game with the world. Oh, they're doing this. Oh, they're doing this. Shame on them. Shame on them. Shame on them. But God, God in his love and his grace wants us to quit pointing fingers at others. Quit pointing fingers. And frankly, Quit setting up a hierarchy of sins and start leaning into being the kind of person that would make God proud. That's what we're called to do as followers of Jesus, is become the kind of person that God goes, that's my boy, right there, that's my boy. The kind of person that makes God go, that's, that, that's my daughter right there, I want you all to see. That's my daughter. Just like we all crave mama to be proud of us in that way. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. One of the things the church needs to stop doing is pointing out certain sins above others. And what we're going to say at the end of the day is this. We need to stop focusing on the symptoms of sin and instead find healing for the disease of death. Let me say that again. We need to stop focusing on the symptoms of sin and start finding healing for the disease of death. As I was thinking about Mother's Day and as I was thinking about my favorite memories of my mother, uh, my Bonnie, I am welcoming you into the family, and I am so grateful. If, if you don't know, my, my dad and, and Bonnie are getting married June 19th. We get to welcome Bonnie into the family. Pray for her. She does not yet know all that she is getting herself into. But one of the things I'm so grateful for is my mother was a collector. Was your mo- is your mother a collector? There were knickknacks everywhere. And so as Bonnie is getting ready, as my dad, they're, they're cleaning out the house. You know, they're, they're, they're doing all of this work ahead of time because I used to wake up in cold sweats if they would both pass and I had to do all that work myself. And so they're getting it all done. And, and so if you like knickknacks, let us show you pictures. We will sell you stuff. But my dad has this one picture uh, and I was just looking through all of the knickknacks, and I saw something. I saw something. It was, it was a, a white metal basin that has, that's porcelain and a bucket that matches. And I, it, it, I wish I had just grabbed the picture and put it up on the, uh, on the screen so that you could see what it was. It's nothing fancy. It's just a white. It was an old, old-fashioned sink, you know, before, when you would have to pour water into the sink. It was just one of those with a matching bucket. Nothing fancy. And anybody at a, 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 a consignment shop may pay you two fifty, five bucks for the combo. Nothing fancy. 
But when I saw it, I said, I, I, don't, I don't know that I can let that go. I don't know that I can give that away. And, and here's why. And maybe this is, this is how you remember your mom too. This, don't, don't be grossed out by what I'm going to share. But that was our puke bucket. I know, the things you don't expect your pastor to say. <laughs> and, and, and that's what my mom would grab when one of us got sick. And I know this sounds so silly, but I want you to walk with me down this step for just a second. I got some funny stories about my mom. She was an amazing woman. She was a great leader. But the parts that are most dear to my heart are when she cared for me when I hurt right? And that silly porcelain bowl and bucket is a reminder of that. Oh my gosh, when I was sick, the symptoms, she would t take care of all of my symptoms, but, but she wouldn't let me just get up and get better. She always wanted me, even when the symptoms started to go away, when I would get the sickness, the flu, the cold, whatever it was, you know, just because I was starting to feel better, she didn't want me running away. She wanted me to find healing, right? It wasn't just when the symptoms are better. It was when the disease was gone. We're, we're coming out of COVID. I am so thankful that we are coming out of COVID. What has been so unique about this disease is the symptoms are not the same for everybody. Some people don't even know they have it, yet they have the disease. Some people... They would just lose their taste of, their taste and their sense of smell. Be fine other than that. Others are dying because they can't breathe. It, I mean, as you tracked the symptoms of this disease, it, 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 was, it was amazing to see just the disparity. And yet they all came in and it was all the same disease. And folks, as we get ready to dive into the scriptures today, I want you to see that sin, sin, there's two versions of how you can write out sin. There's sin that we normally talk about, small s, i, n. But there's a much bigger disease that Scripture calls sin, capital S, i, n. And another way that Scripture refers to that, it is the disease of death. We were not created to die. We, when God made us, had life breathed into us. We were not created to die. But pride contaminated us with the disease. And death is its name. Now Jesus is the cure. He took on the disease of death and conquered it. That through him, to use our common thing today, we are all vaccinated into his victory if you choose to take that on. But, but what we are so often guilty of is trying to point our fingers and say, you're sicker than me. Look at your sin symptoms. Ooh, ooh, oh my gosh, look at you. And we judge each other based on the symptoms instead of looking at the disease. And so if you have your Bibles, we're going to look at a story where that is really spelled out in amazing detail. In the Gospel of John chapter 8, it'll be on the screen, it's in your bulletin. But I want to invite you to turn there and I want you to see this story and I want you to see it in terms of what we just talked about. Symptoms first disease. And here's what John records. It says this, Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives. Jesus was always teaching at either the temple or the Mount of Olives. That, that was a great place to go hang out. It was a shady place with all of the olive trees, and a lot of people would gather there. Jesus often camped out there overnight, would spend time in prayer at the Mount of Olives. Everybody knew he would be either at the temple or the Mount of Olives if, if he was in and near the city. And this is what he says, Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives, but early the next morning, he was back again at the temple. A crowd gathered and he sat down and he taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. And they put her in front of the crowd. 
What is it about sexuality that makes us want to point fingers at it? What is it about that act? This woman caught in the act of adultery. They're trying to catch Jesus. That's what it's going to say. They want, they want to catch Jesus in this. It says this, Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act. Twice John says that. So I want you to just realize they didn't take hearsay into effect. I, 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 have, to, I have to assume to catch someone in the act in such a strategic time that I, I have to assume this woman was set up. I don't know that that's me reading into this. But they caught her in the act. And why do you have to catch someone in the act strategically at a time like this? It's because of this next sign. It says this, Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. The law said that if you're caught in the act, if you are guilty of adultery, the punishment could be stoning. That is where you back them into a corner and you throw stones at them until they die. And that is what the religious teachers try to catch Jesus on. Since that's what the law says, says they were trying to trap him into saying something that they could use against him. Caught in the act. Folks, our world today, our culture today, and our church today is just wrapped way up tight in conversation and debate and fights over human sexuality. Now, I'm going to be clear when I stand up here. Scripture speaks to it. Scripture is not confusing on the matter. It's not. Jesus wasn't confused on the matter. Jesus never spoke about it because he didn't need to. But do you know what? Scripture is equally clear about obesity. Equally clear about gluttony. In fact, far more so. And yet, in our culture, 40% of our population is obese. I don't know. I, I've been playing with that line a long time. I've told you this story before. I was 25, went to the doctors because I was having a knee problem. And he looked at me and he goes, I bet you're about a 25 or 30. And I said, well, I think I was 24 at the time. I said, no, I'm 24. Um, I thought you would have known that when you read my chart. And he goes, no, 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 no. Uh, so anything up to 25, your body mass index, anything up to 25 is considered normal. But 25 to 30, that's considered obese. Anything over 30 is, uh, I can't remember exactly how it was, but I looked shocked at him. I never saw myself in that light. He just called me obese. My I didn't look all that much different than I do right now. My doctor called me obese. And do you know what? He was right. Now, I could argue BMI with you all the time, and they do argue BMI. And is that a good indicator of your actual body weight and your body health? But I'll tell you what, I'm a glutton when it comes to certain foods. <laughs> Today's my birthday, if you don't know. Thank you. And uh, one of the things I've asked for is a bag of Doritos and to be left alone. <laughs> and I'm not joking. That's really just one of the things I really want. And listen to how I just joked about that. And there are people starving who have not had a meal in days. And I just joked, and we all laughed, about my gluttony. But we catch women in the act of adultery. We disobey authority 
we don't speak highly of our leaders. Scripture's pretty clear about that. Don't have to agree with them, but we have to respect them. Well, they're not worthy of respect. That's not what Scripture says. We can't nuance sin. We can't nuance symptoms. We need to look past the symptoms and see the disease. I'm a glutton because of the disease of death. And the cure is not to fix my gluttony as much as I try. The cure is to find healing in Christ and to aim to be holy. And I want you to see how Jesus points out that truth in this scripture. Look at this. He continues. It says, they were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. I love how Jesus acts. He says, but he stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. So that's such a strange act, isn't it? Such a strange way to respond. Here's this woman, and, and honestly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make another assumption as I visualize this story taking place. Not only did they catch this woman in the act, John says that twice. Not only did they catch the I have to assume they didn't let her get cleaned up. They grabbed her as she was and brought her to the crowd. You know what I love about Jesus? Talk about love. Talk about grace. He gets everybody's eyes to go to him. Everybody's looking at her and looking at Jesus. Looking at her and looking at Jesus. What's Jesus going to say? What's Jesus going to say? What's Jesus going to say? And he's look, they're looking at her. Look at her. Look at her. Look at her. And Jesus goes, look at me. And he starts drawing everybody's attention down to the ground. Talk about love, right? Talk about taking your eyes off the symptom and directing it to the disease. And it says this, they, be, they kept demanding an answer. So he stood up again and said, all right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. And then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. Now, we don't know what he wrote in the dust. I, I, I think maybe he was writing the Ten Commandments. Maybe he being God, knew some names and knew some places and knew some times. And he just started writing some of them in the dust. But his comment, let him who is without sin be the first one to throw a stone. That statement is a recognition that we need to quit focusing on the symptoms. When I have a cold, when I have the flu, I may have a stuffy nose. I may have congestion. I may have nausea. I might need my white bucket. But those are only symptoms, signs of something wrong within me. And just because your symptoms might be worse than mine, your body might respond differently than mine, it doesn't change the virus. The disease. And that's what Jesus is trying to drive home. And when the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest. Folks, you ever want to know what gray hair is? It's exhaustion, right? Is that what gray hair is? That's, uh, it, 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 it's worry. Worry is sort of like a lemon. It just sucks you out and it sucks all of the pigment out of your face. But it's also wisdom. It is wisdom. And it says that the oldest are the first to leave. They were wise enough to know that Jesus just got me. I've been focusing on the symptoms of sin as if hers are worse than mine. Jesus just got me. But, but the younger ones, you know, they stick around a little bit more ideology. But they walk away here until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again to the woman and said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Now, I need to be clear. We need to not pass by that. 
We have a disease. It's called death. The symptoms are the outgrowth of that disease. They are the causes of harm and disaster in our communities, in our families, in all of that. And they are a choice. Although we have a proclivity towards gluttony, towards anger, towards being really sharp with my tongue, that is not the freedom to go and just do that. Grace is not the freedom to go do whatever. Grace is the freedom to come back from whatever. And Jesus says, look, I'm not going to judge you based on your symptoms. I'm going to save you from the disease, but don't go live those symptoms anymore. Matt, you have a choice. Matt, you have a choice. You don't have to live into those symptoms anymore. And that's our call, church, to quit being selective with sin and start living towards holiness. That's holiness is that wholeness, that healing that comes. The disease is death. And if you, if you, need, if you need a refresher on that, we love John 3.16, for God so loved the world. I bet almost all of you could quote that one, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. My kids know that one, but do you know what comes after that? Check out verse 18. One verse afterwards, it says this, there is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world and people love darkness more than light for their actions are evil. What Jesus is speaking of here is the reason we need saved is because we're all guilty. All of us have this disease. We are born into it. We are born into it to varying degrees, just as if COVID has different symptoms, and our bodies, the way we're born, respond differently to it. But we all have the disease of death. We're all under the judgment. And that's what Jesus is saying. Look, you're not better than them over there. You have the same guilt. But we have a choice. Will we now find victory in Jesus and follow his commands to go and sin no more? In fact, even that whole idea of holiness, you know, that's what we're supposed to be like. I said, I'm so much like my mother. She wanted me to be better than her. She wanted me to live a good life. Make mama proud. What God wants all through Leviticus, in Matthew, in Luke, in 1 Peter, is the statement, be holy, holy, because your heavenly Father is holy. Be perfect. Not perfect as if you never make a mistake, but always aiming to become better and better and better and better and better when it comes to sin. You don't have to be tempted. Here's a funny thing, and I've told you guys all of this before. I used to smoke. I smoked for 20 years. I was watching a documentary on kids in the 90s. I was a kid and a college student in the 90s, and I was surprised our world has changed so much in 25 years. I can't believe it was 25. All that white hair, it's wisdom. But they were all smoking in the documentary. And I was like, oh, that's right, we, we were smoking back then. And it was so challenging to quit smoking. How many of you ever had to quit something? Whew, I, that was a hard thing to do. Oh, was that hard to do. And the first day, all I could think about was smoking. And the first week, all I could think about was smoking. And I was chewing gum. And you want to know why I have a toothpick all the time with me? It's because I still have that desire to have something in my mouth. And the first week was challenging. The first month was challenging. The first year, I started to get better. I didn't crave it that much. But every once in a while, ooh, it would hit me. But now it's been 10 years. And do you know, I don't want a cigarette at all anymore. I don't. Every once in a while, I'm like, eh, 
ah, that used to be fun. I wish it was healthy, but I don't want one now. Sin is the same way that way. It's hard at first, but to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect is a process. It's a choice, day in, day out, and it's hard at first, but the more we aim towards holiness, the more we allow the Holy Spirit to move in us, the more we say yes to Jesus, because I'm a Jesus follower, not a Matt follower. I'm a Jesus follower, not a me follower. The more I do that and I lean into his grace, the more I go, eh, sin's not that big of a deal. I'm, I'm not as drawn to it as much anymore to the point where we can be holy as our Heavenly Father is holy. We can be compassionate, as Luke says, as our Heavenly Father is compassionate. Peter records it this way. Jump ahead uh, a little bit there, Elena. He says this in 1 Peter 1.14. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. Don't point fingers at other people. Don't condemn others for their sin. Live such a life that they go, wow, how come you don't have any of those symptoms? Live such a life of wholeness, of health, of holiness, that people look at you and go, wow, why are you different? You have, you have a joy when everything else is falling apart. Why are you different? None of us like this person over here, and yet you love them. You don't like them, but you love them. You respect them. You do this. Why are you different? You seem to... Because we're obedient children of God. We love Jesus. He continues. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own de- desires. You didn't know any better back then. But you do now. But now you must be holy in everything you do. Just as God, who chose you, is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. Folks, I want to close with this thought. You can do it. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, you no longer have to live into the symptoms anymore. You no longer have to focus on the symptoms anymore. You can find healing from death. You can be holy. You have the ability because of God's grace in you to go change the world. You have the ability to be that spark that becomes a wildfire of revival, of change. Does our culture need change? How about an amen? Amen, it does. And do you know why? It's not just because of human sexuality. It's because of our gluttonous, our selfishness, our self-centeredness. We no longer honor our mother and father, do we? We no longer honor gray hair. The more gray hair I get, the more I realize we need to honor gray hair. It's funny how that works, right? There was a culture, a day and a time where to have gray hair was a high honor. Today, to have no wrinkles is the honor. We've flipped it around. We've lost sight of so much. That's the disease of death at work. And we need to quit pointing fingers and thinking we have the answer and just say, I'm a Jesus follower. And what does that mean? It means to be holy, to live into that goodness, to live into that freedom, to have God's grace, to come back. Not to go do whatever, but come back from whatever, to stand with him. And you can do it. You can be that person. If you're watching online, you can be that person. You could be the one who changes someone else's life. Because God chose you. When I was a kid, I hated playing kickball. You know why I hated playing kickball? Because I wasn't the first one chosen, the second one chosen, the third one chosen. I loved the sport. But I hated the agony of wondering if I would be chosen. But in fairness, looking back, I know why I wasn't chosen. I wasn't that great. I still didn't have my coordination. I don't know that I still have coordination. 
I wasn't that great. I didn't have a lot of ability. That's why I wasn't chosen. And we can go, oh, that's so sad. But no, that's real. That's, that's the way the world is. But guess what? You have been chosen. Let me say that again. God chose you. And he has given you all of his grace, all of his power. You can do it. The God of the universe who knows all things says, I want you on my team. I want you with me. God of the universe thinks the world of you. He's got your artwork on his refrigerator. He's got all your school pictures in his wallet. And he wants you to be just like him. Holy. Because he's holy. Holiness is the goal for all of us. And so church, want to change the world? Don't forget that God has chose you. And don't go tell them what they're doing wrong. Show them how to live right. Don't point at one another and say, this is what's wrong with you. Say, hey, would you help me get right? Would you walk with me? Everything can change. If we lean into the truth, that we are God's chosen people, loved by Him to love all of them. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank You that You've chosen us, but we would be lying if we didn't confess it. That's hard to believe sometimes. It's hard to believe because we know what sees us in the mirror. We know all of our foibles and all of our failures. Lord, we know the things that we are so addicted to. We know the lies that we have built our lives upon. Our actions that satisfy an appetite that always leads to destruction, but oh, it tastes so good going down. Forgive us, Lord. For all of the times we think we are unworthy of your grace. Forgive us, Lord, for all of those times that we think We don't belong on your team. Lord, forgive us when we try to make our own rules for your team. Oh, but Lord, today make us new and help us move towards holiness. Lord, make us new. And help us become everything you've always dreamed we would be. Thank you for your grace and your love. For the victory we have in Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing our closing hymn.
again, I want to remind you and invite you, if you would like to be a, a, a supporter of the ministries that are happening at Christ Church, if you call this church your home and want to see God do great things through it, I want to invite you to, to give. Uh, and there are baskets outside as you leave. You can do that, or you can give online, or you can give through the mail. Either way, come be a part of this team. And if you are, thank you for your faithfulness in doing that. Uh, right after this service, prior to Sunday school, not for long, but prior to Sunday school, we have muffins for moms. Oh, and I had to be very careful in how I say that. It's moms. Up north, it's moms. It's mummy. But here, it's muffins for moms. Moms. Over in our Family Life Center, we have special gifts for you. All of you who have moms, you're welcome to come on over there. Uh, who are moms, we have gifts for you. And there's a photo booth so you can get all pretty and get your picture taken. We are excited to celebrate with you. Come join us over there. Next week, next Sunday after church, uh, 5.30 is tweens. Mark your calendar, come join us for that. Folks? Um, before you stop, Matt, don't kill me. Um, but if y'all don't know, but today is Matt's birthday, and we have a surprise for him. So hold your thought if you're going to say something super serious. I'm sorry if I just interrupted that. Um, but I got to give kudos to Nick because he just made something really cool with the help of some of my footage that I had. So roll it, Elena. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Matt's Funniest Home Videos. Technology is supposed to make our lives easier. That's not always the case. In crazy year 2020. I mean, my goodness, what is going on? But it's a bit. Go in God's blessing, knowing that God is good and I'm going to try that one more time. Today, May 31st, is a very special Sunday in our church. It is time for our phase in fellowship. Let me see if I can find that. Wrong way. Let's try that again. If you're going to get stuck talking on one topic, make sure it's something important. Now, if you're excited about toilet paper, then you are at the right place. I need to start that over. That was... I had the perfect excuse to buy the fancy stuff. Now, I haven't gotten to use it yet, and, and, and I don't know if I'll make that one of my devotions, but I'm so excited. God has opened this silver lining that we get to have some fancy stuff. But that is definitely a mixed blessing. How many of you comment below if you're excited because you've gotten to experience maybe some high, nah, I'm, I'm spending too long on that. Forgetting things happens to all of us. Good thing it never happens at the wrong time. I'm sorry. If you're all watching from Tabernacle, just get used to this. This is something I do regularly. I totally forget what we were supposed to do. <coughs> Have a seat, folks. <laughs> and the downside of being on the internet is now everybody can watch this. And you just go with it. That's our show. Good night and... Happy birthday, Pastor Matt. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Matt. Happy birthday to you. tell you how old I am. I'll just let the gray hair show it. Hey, oh man, I don't even know what to say. How to follow that up. Uh, Nick, I'll get you back. Uh, <laughs> I love being a part of this family. You are a part of this family. Let's go make God proud. 
let's go be holy because he's holy. Because we can. Because he wants you to be with him. Let's go show the world how awesome it is to be loved by God. Amen. Thank you.